Hello class. I want to give you a quick tour of what a Tor browser is. Since this week's topic uh, chapter does mention the dark web, I thought I'd show it to you. So um, the Tor browser itself, it comes from the torproject.org. And um, ironically, if you look about Tor, I don't want to get into it, there's a video here. Uh, and yes, you can go here, it's just fine. There's nothing, nothing here that's malicious. Uh, it's just the Tor browser site. It talks about how the Onion services work. And uh, the background, actually this was developed way back by the U.S. Navy, or by the Department of Defense for the U.S. Navy, I believe, um, to help communicate securely from ship to shore without um, leaving a trace of where you're at. So that's the thing here. It sort of goes through, and this sort of gives you an example of how it works. And it's called the Onion Router. That's what Tor means. So Onion Routing sort of puts your traffic into this, this network that doesn't get traced. So it gets encrypted, and as your traffic bounces through, it unpeels where it came from and deletes it. And so there's no way to trace back traffic. Um, now, of course, um, there are ways. Uh, the FBI has shown that. Um, you can see an exit relay. And also, of course, the Tor client itself has been known to have some issues where it could be compromised. You could figure out, uh, it's possible for authorities to figure out where you've been. Um, so let's talk about, so how do, what is this Onion Links and what does the Tor network look like? Uh, at least the, the dark web. Um, I love that you use the accentuation there, dark web. So first off, you need to find how you can get there. And I will launch Tor Browser. Now I downloaded it here on my Linux machine. It will launch the Tor Browser and establish the Tor circuit. So the Tor circuit is just that. It is... Um, it has created a partial path through existing Tor points. So you look at it, it looks like a regular Firefox uh, based browser. Uh, and you can, you can explore privately here. I can do actually a, a DuckDuckGo search. Uh, this Tor browser is actually on a secure network already. So yeah, we can do a regular search. We can do a Sinclair College. And I get regular DuckDuckGo results. So this looks like a regular web browser um, in all means here. So we need to find these special onion links. And here's the little found right here. I've actually just did a Google for Pastebin Tor links. Uh, Pastebin is a site where people will dump anything. It's a way to share text um, anonymously. So a lot of people will actually take this and dump like uh, data breach. They'll dump credit card numbers here, links, and not everything's malicious. People might dump um, shared code or maybe work on our project with a team. But um, it becomes a, just a huge that's a bin where people paste stuff. So I'm going to copy this Tor link right here. I'm going to paste and go. So now when you run through the Tor network, it is slower. Um, because of the anonymization features, the way it works, uh, the way it has to encapsulate and de-encapsulate all the packets um, to strip off your uh, your location, it takes a little longer to run. Um, a key thing here is if you can see, this is not a regular URL. That is a dot onion URL. So there's a redirect here. For the main page. So this is the dark web. Not as scary as it looks. Um, you can see. So this URL could be changed. This onion can be changed to help hide this web page. So this is not searchable on the regular uh, internet. So it can't be mapped with Google or any other um, any other web browsing services. So what we have here, we have a wiki page, the hidden wiki. And it has links to all kinds of services along the dark web or the Tor network. 
I think the dark web gets a little bit of a bad reputation. Uh, we think of this this place is just a place where um, bad things can be sold or transferred. And unfortunately it is, yes. Um, because of the, the way you can run anonymously on here, uh, people do things on here, of course, they'll buy drugs, they'll hire someone to hack somebody, even hire someone to be swatted, even hire someone to be killed. Um, there's a lot of stuff on here. But there's also places um, that allow people to chat and communicate, maybe from countries that don't allow political dissent. This allows people to go ahead and communicate from those countries sometimes. So uh, it allows for secure communication, maybe whistleblowing. So there's a lot of stuff here. Um, but yeah, if you want to vendor credit cards to see these links work. Now, links on the on your network, they work, they don't. Um, a lot of pages go down. So here we are, premium cards. Um, this looks pretty, this looks okay to share with you. Uh, there's places on the dark web, yes, that have uh, child pornography, uh, just really bad stuff uh, that I don't even go to. Um, in fact, the only reason I have this Tor browser installed is just so I can show you this. So, but again, you can, it's like pre premium cards. So you're in the right place. How much these are stolen cards? If they're, if these are just untraceable cards for, for sending money back and forth. So I would not buy a card from here myself, but uh, uh, knock yourself out. So again, there's a lot of stuff here. If we go back, uh, this talks about the Silk Road. Now, again, the Silk Road's been in the textbook, actually. This was um, taken down. There's a Silk Road, too, so I don't think this link would actually work. And we'll see. So, again, as you can see, it takes a while to resolve a route through the Onion Network, the, the Tor Network here. So Silk Road's been taken down. It, again, it was really was the haven for places where you would buy and sell uh, illegal items, drugs, um, exchange services, things like that. So we'll see. That probably is not going to resolve. We'll let that run for a little bit. So there's directories of links. We'll close this. Tab. I don't. Silk Road's been taken down, and they tried again, and uh, it's been taken down again. So, um, the government's find a way to governments around the world have found a way to crack down um, in cooperation with each other these more malicious sites. So that, that might run for a while. That might even resolve. So, here's skim cards, cash out, royalty cards, commercial services. It's a gun market, counterfeiting center, <laughs> Apple Place. <laughs> Here you go. With the Apple, uh, again, there you go, established connection error. So it's not a very reliable network, especially as you get to more questionable sites. Take Passports, for example. Um, so a lot of these are taken down pretty quick from local governments. Um, most of the uh, more benign services, like you see prepaid cards, things that are probably uh, not illegal, but maybe questionable on their reliability, are usually left up. So you can see this is going to run for a while. Uh, some Bitcoin stuff and so on. There's a fake ID generator. That sounds interesting. Let's get a fake ID. So there you go. Forsaken, the fake ID generator. <laughs> yeah. This looks this looks almost fake. Um, Anyways, I'm not even sure that's, does this create a fake ID on the fly for me? I'm now uh, Valerie A. Robbins from Savage, Minnesota. So there you go. Um, this could be good for like role playing games, maybe. You need to make, make some fake characters. So I got one stake anything. Uh, a good criminal will probably find a better way to do. Uh, then just use that site. So, again, books. Here you go. Here's drugs. So, drugs, uh, erotica, porn, uncategorized, the underground. I'm not going to go there. <laughs> and, of course, different countries have different. Uh, the Black Coast 
and Italian, Korean, of course we have different languages, countries, and so on. So that is, this is, as you can see, the darknet. Um, and it all is based upon uh, this dot onion, which is the onion router, uh, linking and uh, routing. So hopefully it gives you a little bit of a taste of the dark net. We'll shut down the browser. And again, if you want more overview, the best place to go is probably right here, uh, torproject.org. Um, so again, just look at it with both lights. It's not always a bad place. It could be a place where, um, again, people who are under political regimes can um, communicate out to the world uh, what's going on in their country, where normally uh, their communication will be monitored and or blocked. So anyways, I hope you like the little tour, and um, uh, we'll see you online.